Thank you. We exalt and honor you. We glorify your holy name because you are the God that answers prayer. Unto you shall every vow be performed. Because in our life and in your kingdom, Lord, there is no accident. You are the keeper of our life and the guardian of our soul. The preserver of our lives. The one who understands our own history. Lord, secrecy belongs to you. But whatever is revealed belongs to us. Lord, tonight we have an opportunity once again to independently verify what you have planned to do with us. Lord, tonight we thank you for the privilege to stand once again in your presence and to go about the teaching of today in honor. Lord, as we exalt your name, we want your presence to come mightily upon your people. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them with power to make impossibility possible. Power to do the things you have planned for them. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, this is a continuation of our teaching, which says, Praise and Worship. Praise and worship. What is praise and worship? Before we were interrupted, praise and worship is an avenue to reach God. Man is essentially a worship creature. It is part of his nature. The only question is who will he worship? Does he worship God? Does he worship either? Does he worship the government? Does he worship the God of the earth? The God of the land and of the sea? Who does he worship? Does he worship some occultic tools or grandmaster somewhere? Who does man worship? The more we worship something, we become like whom we worship. If your reverence to your God is to kill a cow, to kill a ram, to kill some goat and some sheep, gradually, you not see it as a point of duty to offer that worship to that particular object. But God, on the contrary, He lives in the praise of His people. The more we worship God, the more we become like Him in his appearance. The more we worship him, when I mean we become like him, we become like him in power. We become like him in glory. We become like him in doing the impossible things. What does it mean to worship? The Hebrew word is shasha, which means worship. Bow down. Do abstinence, give reverence, fall down. In the New Testament, the word is poskunio. Similarly, means to kiss the hand, to fall upon the knee, to touch the ground with the forehead. Profound reverence. Two other worship word means to physically serve, to perform sacred service. Offer gifts to God. Let my people go so that they might worship me. Why would God go through all the pains after 400 years in captivity to tell Pharaoh to let the children of Israel depart from Egypt so that they might worship me? Because God, without worship, there was no ability to bless his people, to empower them to become a kingdom of priests, to become a holy nation as he has promised their father. And the blessing of Abraham can only be fulfilled upon his children if they present themselves to God. This was God's repeated demand to Pharaoh. 
which led to the exodus of God's people from Egypt. Since then, God, who is jealousy, God who fought with his people to keep them from worshipping any other God, rather than the worshipping of the one true living God. Worship is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. God actively seeks worshippers to worship him in spirit and in truth. As we see in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 23, the Father wants everyone that worships him to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not to go to some matters or to some special church or special service. When we talk about spirit and truth, what does we mean? What does it mean to worship God in spirit and truth? Spirit. God is a spiritual entity. Man is a freshly created. And God breaks into us his spirit, a man became a living spirit or a living soul. So without the spirit of God, we are empty. The second one is truth. What truth are we talking about? Are we talking about facts in court? No. We are talking about the truth as a person, the personality of Christ. The Bible said, God made him to be seen, who knew no sin for us, that we might be the heir according to the covenant of promise. Christ became sin so that we can become holy. Like faith is a spiritual entity, praise is also a spiritual entity. Like faith can be manifested and be seen. The same way, praise can be so thick that it can be fed. And true worship is when we allow the Holy Spirit to draw adoration from inside of us. Not just a mass ESA, but to allow the spirits of God to act on our spirits. Because we, as man, we are a spirit that lives inside a case or an idol called a body. And when the spirit of God bears record with our spirit, we can know the things of God. Our praise can become acceptable to God. And the heart leads us in worship. And then you felt the spiritual man comes alive. For example, you have a church full of people where the choir minister is a beautiful shining object standing in the front of the congregation after having come from the bed of immorality. The praise is the father. And I will tell you the reason why. The first is the prayer of the sinner is an abomination unto God. And praise, you and I agree, is prayer to God. And secondly, our body is the temple where God himself resides in praise because his spirit resides in us. And anybody that defies God will destroy us. And therefore, God said to Sinner, what right have you to take my name upon your lips since you hate instruction? And the Bible says, though he cried, I will not hear him. So, just like the children of Israel, when both Nis and Phinehas, the sons of Elis, defied the altars of the Lord by eating the sacrifice that was meant for the offerings of God. They went to battle. And when the children of Israel saw that the ark of the covenant of God came into the camp, the Bible said they shouted that the heaven rang and the earth rang again. Normally, it was not up to that shout they shouted in Jericho. The wall of Jericho fell down flat. But something happened. This time the ark did not drain Jordan. The walls, the Philistines did not fall. Because it was an empty shout. Because the man who carried the ark was defiled. Because the man who worshipped is like breathing, like the prince, going into the holies of holy, 
presenting the offers of sacrifice, presenting it to God in a linen that is not stained with blood. And when this priest is stained with sin, the Lord will kill him inside the altar. That's what happened. And so, anybody that brings praise to the Lord must be holy. And that's what the Bible said, "Ye that bear the vessel of the Lord, be ye holy. For I, the Lord your God, I am holy. God is a holy God. God inhabits the praise of his people. And only in holiness can the throne of God be established. God is not a man. He does not need our food to survive. So what does he need? Holiness. Purity. Sanctification. These are the food that God needs. But how can we give him this? Since we are a man formed from the flesh through Christ. Christ in us is the hope of glory. For we to be able to bear the version of the Lord, we must first be obedient to his law. And the Bible says his laws are not grievous. Anyone that comes to God must first believe that God is God. And is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That means the doubtful will not come into his presence. If you stay in doubt, your praise is useless before God. If you are not sure that God is God, you cannot come into his presence with a heart full of doubt. Because the Bible says, let's come to the presence of God with a heart full of thanks. And you must boldly come. And a sinner cannot be bold. Because the Bible says, the wicked for you, why not my pursue him? But the righteous is as bold as a lion. That means the righteous can boldly come to the throne of grace. Why the wicked cannot? So it doesn't matter how many people sing in your church. It's sin. It's in the camp. The praise is nothing. It doesn't matter how many clouds they are. And how sweet the melodies is, or the instrument. Better is a hand claps, and the man who claps the hand is holy, than a sweet chorister who is singing with sin. So when the hand is clapping righteousness, God who inhabits the praise of his people, lives in the song, carries the praise, to his presence. And we know what happened to a man called Lucifer in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. He thought he could ascend to heaven. He could be like the most high. He could sit on the mount of congregation on the side of the north and be like God. But the Bible said he was brought low to the peaks, to the sites that did weaken the nation. What was his offense? Because praise seems to make one ascribed to be in the presence of God, grow to become like God. So Lucifer was in that shoe. This time he controlled it whole safe. He was a choir conductor in heaven, in charge of all the hosts bringing the music. And as a result, he wants some of those praise for himself. So, he failed to understand one thing. God does not share his glory with any man. His praise cannot be given to another. And Lucifer was so keen in exalting the praise that he wanted to ascribe some to his glory. He wanted to also use that praise because God lives in that. If this praise is so important to God, Maybe that is why he's so powerful. So I also want some for myself. 
I want to live also in the praise, but this time for selfish interest. I want to ascend to the hills and above all the stars of God. He was an angel. He was one of the stars of God. But he wants to rule over other stars. And he wants to be like the most high. After all, I'm one of the most decorated servants. It's like having a bunch of slaves in your house. One of the slaves turns out to make himself the slave leaders over other slaves. That is what Lucifer was doing. He was a slave leader. But God looked at him. And because of that thought in his heart, his hand was defiled. He was no longer worthy to bear the vessel of the Lord. So he has to be thrown down. Because one thing that when we get to a place of authority, we must understand why we were promoted in the first instance. We were not promoted because of our grade. It is your position that gives you the status. And if God has not put you in that position, you will not get the status. Don't always think that the people are your servants. No. They are there in obedience to the word of God. And when God removes his people, you will become empty. And that's one thing you must keep at the back of your mind as a leader. In the realm of glory, there are two competing factors. One is self. If you allow self to rule over you, you will be controlled like Lucifer by the things you fear. But if you allow God, on the other hand, to rule over you, he will control your thoughts. And nothing in the world will control you. That is the difference. Christians must learn to understand this fact that God is the one that gives the glory. That no man is a superman. God can use you to raise the dead, heal the sick, do many signs and wonders like as he have used me to do in some cases. But that does not give me the status of a God over another man. How do you know a minister of God? When you come to give him reverence, he said to you, No, it is not man, it is God. God will not share his glory with any man. His glory cannot be given to another. As believers, we need to understand this fact that God is the one who is doing all the powerful things through us. Who puts you in the realm of glory? Five years before God had ordained or anointed you, who knows your name? What was your father's name? What village did you come from? What authority did you have outside of God? What did you earn that you did not receive? If you did receive them, why are you boasting as if you did not receive them? God gave you authority. And you use the same authority to enslave another man. I tell you, there is a judge who will not overlook. In the realm of glory, it's an important place that because of the shekinah glories of the Lord, you want to abide there forever. But you have to be careful. There are pitch for there. Lucifer was once there. He was among the fairy stones of God. He saw the realm of glory in his fullest. But something happened. Iniquity was found in his hand. When you also get there, be careful so that the promise will not be left with you of not entering into his rest. It takes humility Submission, devotion, and purity to assess the presence of God. It doesn't matter the height you go, 
Once one is missing from this fashion, like Lucifer, you find yourself being hauled down from the heart. It doesn't matter how high you have gone. Don't be so high that you can no longer confess your sin. That you can no longer repent of your evil deed. Because it takes humility to serve before the Lord. The Lord said, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Without humility, you can never stay long on the realm of glory. You must breathe in and breathe out. Lucifer also wanted to stay there and be able to help himself to stay long in the realm of glory. But he never quite succeeded. He lost it all. If you want to stay in the realm of glory, let God be your guide. So that you don't end up by sitting upon the mat of congregation, making the widows and the orphans donate to you without you taking care of them like the apostle did. The apostle understood this fact that when the orphans and the widows bring their best to the house of the Lord and they cast offerings into the pots, it is not for the man of the altar. It's so that there will be meat in the house of God. So that the poor and the widow might feed. So that people can be helped according to as they have needs. So, today, the ball is in your court. The Lord, indeed, will promote you to the realm of glory through this message. But the question is, when you get there, what are you ready to do with it? Are you going to end up like Lucifer? In the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel chapter 28, that he got wealth and riches through wisdom, he was wiser than Daniel, and there was so nothing anybody can hide from him. And with his wisdom, he brought much riches and gain for himself. Even to the extent of being able to offer Jesus the kingdom of the world in exchange for worship. But the Lord, of course, refused. Because what shall it profit a man? If this world is your target and you lose your soul in return. Today, Christians don't even wait for the world to be offered to them. All it takes to make Christians compromise nowadays is to offer them fine car, beautiful house, and sometimes one Jezebel agent. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, let's see what Jesus was being offered. That he turned down. If today many Christians would not happily grab it, <clears throat> Jesus in verse 8 to 10, and again the devil take him to the exceedingly high mountain and show him all the kingdom of the world and the glory and the glory of them, and said unto him, all these things will I give thee. If thou will fall down and worship me. All the kingdoms of the earth, the glory, all the social states, and all the kings, all the cars, all the electric cars and the EVs, all the marshals, all the factories, all the United Nations, the armor tank, they are offered to him. The devil must be very rich to be able to offer such a wonderful offer to the Lord. All the kingdom of the world. But only one thing was required. Not human sacrifice. Not killing your first son and your daughter. 
just bow and worship. And the Lord refused. He refused to worship the devil for everything in the world. He refused to take the easy way out of the cross. But rather, he chose to die and he took the hard way. He gave up his life so that you and I will not take the easy way out of life. But today we have Christians who are knocking at your door. Is there no easy way out? Must I need to be baptized? Must I need to serve God with humility? Must I need to do this? Or should I not just avoid reading the Bible altogether, just pray and God will give me power? Is that how it works? No. You need patience. After you have done the work, so you can inherit the blessing. Patience is required. It is in the stewardship. It's required that the man be found faithful. God reward faithfulness. David was just a youth with heart and praise. He came to the praise of God. He knew the art of humility and praise. God lift him from looking after sheep to defeating Goliath down to become king over Israel. God does not promote because you have the largest group on social media. God does not promote you because your church is international church. God does not promote you because half of the world know your name. God promotes you because of your humility. He will take you from ground and take you to the top. Whenever you are invited to a party, even Christ warns us, don't take the higher seat. Go to the lowest seat so that when the man that owns the place come, he will tell you, come from this low seat to a high place. Don't go and take the higher seat. When the man comes and says, oh, sorry, that place is prepared for someone else. You come and take the lower seat. And with disgrace, you are taken from the top to the ground. Praise comes with humility. Did God bless you with a golden voice? You can sing better than all your cares. To God be the glory. Do not boast as if you did not receive. What did you have on earth that you did not receive? If you receive it, why did you boast as if you owe it? Now, worship is to glorify God and to enjoy himself forever. God actively seek worshiper to worship is our first calling. In John 3 verse 23, he said the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In Philippians 3, 3, the true worshiper we allow to withdraw adoration from the spirits and hearts that leads to the true worship. Now, why would God want Christian worship to fill everyone? Because in First Chronicles chapter 25, verse 6 to 8, and from verse 1, we understand. That David divided all the tribe of Israel into 12 groups. Every 12 group were trained in instruments, harps, choristers to beautify the name of the Lord every Sunday, every Sabbath, to exalt his name, to worship him, because this was necessary. The Bible time, a lot of men and women were anointed by God and appointed leader. To lead the people of God of those ancient days into prophetic worship, not just by singing of song as we often do today in our meeting, but bowing in adoration unto the Lord with a heart full of praise. Jehoshaphat was confronted by an army that we had, the Bible could not count. He said they were at the sand in the seashore for multitude. How many soldiers did he have? 300. 
First he kept 3,000. The Lord said they were too many. And the Lord reduced them to 300. Against an army that were like sand in the seashore. And when he has consulted, he puts halves in their mouth, an empty pitcher in their hand. And he lifts up the voice in times given unto the Lord. They went into battle with trumpets and with dancing. When praise goes up, God come down. And when God came down into the camp of the enemy, they turned their sword against themselves. There were no need to fight any battle because they were all dead. Because when praise of God comes into the life of a believer, your enemy will take care of themselves. Worship of God, even in the mouth of babes, children, according to Psalm 8 verse 2, can deliver you from the power of the enemy. So praise is a wonderful thing. Without praise, we cannot actually do anything. Because God is the only one we should worship. Worship is the way for God to come into our life. Worship prepared the way for God to come into our life. In Psalm 22, verse 3. Let's read Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. What did he say? He said, But thou art holy, and O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. God lives in the praise of his people because one, he is a holy God. God is what? Holy. This place just tells us one thing. First, God is holy. And where else does he live? He lives in the praise of his people. When the people of God praise God, God is inside the praise. And we and you and I know that God does not live in an unholy and environment. Because he is a righteous God. The Bible says the will of God for our life is our sanctification. That we present our body as a holy sacrifice unto God which is not defied in any way. And what did God say? He said, we are a holy nation, a peculiar people, a choosing generation, people who are object of his praise, who should show forth the praise of God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous life. We know in time past, we were not part of his people. We know in time past, we were not part of his nation. We were called out from the people, called out circumcised by the circumcision that was made by human flesh. But now, we are his people. Now, we are a chosen race to demonstrate his power. Let's go to Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. He said, Whoso offer praise glorifies me, and to him that ordereth his conversation arise, will I show the salvation of God. First, if you offer praise to God, you are glorifying God. And if your conversation with God is direct from the heart and is first pure, 
God said he will show you his salvation, his freedom. Children worship. Evil listening. Evil silence the enemy. When the children of God worship God, their enemy are silenced in graves. The fastest way to defeat the devil is through worship. Psalm 8, verse 2. The Bible says, Out of the mouth of children and babes and suckling, the Lord has ordained perfect praise. Let's go to Psalm 8, verse 2. Psalm 8, verse 2. He said, Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, Thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemy. Thou mightest yes, steal the enemy and the avengers. The avengers of blood will not have power over you if you learn to praise God. And your enemy will be silenced if only you can open your mouth in praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord. And count his blessings. Name them before him one by one. And see what he has done in your life. I will bless the Lord at all times. The psalmist says. And when do we worship? At all times. When you are happy. When you are lonely. When you are sad. When you are in darkness. Whenever the enemy forces attacks. It is time to worship God. When the enemy sends fear into your life and faith does not respond in time, it is time to allow worship to proceed. Because when God arrives, his enemies are scattered. And how do you make God to arise in your situation? By giving worship to God. At all times, for such times of worship, Let's go to Psalm 100. Let's look how to arrange a time of worship. Psalm 100. Let's read from verse 1. He said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. In everywhere you go, begin to exalt the name of the Lord. Let the people hear you. Sing praises to the Lord. Bible said, Paul and Silas, they pray. They sang, and the prisoners them and the Lord came down with his power and that will happen in the prison alone <laughs> when you praise the Lord the Lord descends in power <laughs> especially the praise is coming from a servant of his when he smiles there is no sin he said the Lord with gladness Come before his presence with singing. When you want to praise the Lord, no matter what the devil is thrown at you, it is not time to carry long face. Because when you come before his presence, it is not a time to be sad. Because when you are sad, you are telling God, I am sorry, I know I trust you, but the devil is stronger than you are. But when you come to his presence, anoint your head with oil, put on a smiling face, rejoice, Celebrate, sing amazing grace. Even by the rivers of Babylon, even when your enemy demands of you of a song, it is not time to carry long things. This is the time to say, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. This is the time to celebrate. Peace. Perfect peace comes from him. When you are learned to praise God, he will open the doors of inner peace. Peace is not the essence of war. When you can have peace in the middle of battle, when the enemy are firing upon themselves, you will sleep. Jehoshaphat was singing his hymns and praise in the battlefield that was against them. So God does not expect you to praise him because the atmosphere is favorable. He wants you to praise him in an unfavorable situation so that favorable, unfavorable situations become favorable. 
Tell how to begin. What does how do you begin praying? First, making a joyful noise. Remember, don't come to God's presence with sadness. Don't come with, to the presence of God with anger. Not even your king will be happy that you serve him his food, carrying a long face. So God is not happy when you bring his food to his presence and your heart is sad. Your mind is in disarray. No. When you come to the presence of God with singing, you know that the Lord, he is God. He is he that has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, we can boldly enter his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is God. And his mercies endure forever. And his truth endure to all generations. That alone is a good time to praise the Lord. When you wake up, you have nothing to praise God with. Take the psalm. Exalt the name of the Lord. Then, Personal life should be never ending worship. Every breath, every thought, word, action should be worshipped to the good God we serve forever and ever. Let's see Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verse 1 and 2. He said, We exalt thee, O Lord, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, I will praise thy name forever and ever. Worship past, present, and future. It is necessary. Men first begin to call upon the name of the Lord in prehistory. When Abraham was going to the promised land, the first thing he did was to build an altar to worship wherever he went. Genesis 4 verse 26, 12 verse 6. In days gone by God, people worshipped in temple, synagogue, but these days our bodies are God's temple. We don't need a temple to worship anymore. God is not looking for people to go to the mountain or to go to the church. But if the true worshiper worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And God is looking for such people to worship Him. Our body is now the object of worship. Because the Holy Spirit is given as a body to us. We are the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 Let's read First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. And he said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? Ye are not your own. Some people will tell you, my body, my pride. Your body is not your own. You cannot be proud of that which you do not own. Your body is somebody's temple. It's a place. Your body is also a case. We are the spirit of God that gives you life, fellowship. It's a temple. Your body is a temple. It is not your own. You do not control it. So use it carefully. Guard it jealously because it is not your property. This means we can worship without waiting for someone, for the team to gather in church, for the archbishop to say it is Thanksgiving time. No, we worship God every day. Wherever we are, wherever circumstance we find ourselves, in prison, in the courthouse, in the office. Wherever we found ourselves is a place of worship. 
In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, let's read where the apostle worship God. Acts 16, verse 25. Acts 16, 25 said, And at midnight, Paul and Sarah prayed, and they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They were in prison. They, they forgot the chains. They forgot the wall. They forgot the cell and the little toilet, and they began to praise God. Mm-hmm. And to the extent that the prisoners heard their praise, but worship on earth only reflects the worship in heaven. You must read the glorious chapter in Revelation 4, 5, 19, from verse 1 to 10. See, and how worship in heaven is full of colors, light, sound, motion, activity, and worship should aim to do just the same. Sing holy, holy unto the Lord. For he is God. How do we worship? The Bible tells us people use their hearts, mind, hand, hearts, arms, feet, limbs in song. They shout for joy with a bow down, dance, praises, blessings, making noise, and thanksgiving. They are all forms of worship. What's from the Psalms like ha ha? Ha hala or hallelujah means to praise, boast of, celebrate the Lord. Yada means to throw us behind. Break barak means to means worship to bless God. The offerings of our bodies for the service of God. Man is also a form of worship. Roman 12. Verse 1. Let's read Roman 12, verse 1. Roman 12, verse 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, better for the mercies of the Lord, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service? God's people should also worship Him in their arts, sculpture, writing, drama, music, architects, as well as giving their monies for the work of the ministry. Worship in church. In church, our meetings should be full of sound, hymns, spiritual song, which can be led by the spirits in a new language that we gives, that he gives. So many modern meetings are no more than platform. Led Christian entertainment, not very different from the theaters. People merely wash, but do they worship? No. The presence of God and the manifestation of his spirits in our worship should cause unbelievers to fall down and worship God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 14, 15 to 16, 25, 26, Ephesians 5, verse 19, Acts 2, verse 4. Let's read Colossians 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, verse 16. What does it say in Colossians 3 verse 16? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. In praise, this is praise the same as worship. We need to praise God for all he has done. But God seek out and need worshiper, not just to worship. Praise can be very public, but worship is always intimate. A time of fellowship. 
meditating on God's blessings, thinking about His good works. Praise is always sense, always seen and heard. Worship can be quiet and hidden. Praise is often expressive, exuberant, aggressive. Praise is often expressive. While worship is often aware in the presence of God. True worship is costly. The Bible talks about sacrifice of praise. David danced before the Lord with all his might. He refused to offer God is sacrifice which cost him nothing. In Psalm, in First Samuel six, verse fourteen, twenty-four, verse twenty-four, wise men from all the east offer costly gifts as they came to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus sees mighty two, verse nine to twelve. A woman anointed Jesus with an expensive perfume. In an act of worship, wash his feet with her own tears and dry them with her hair. In Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. This points to the fact that when we worship God, we make spiritual sacrifice that we never go unnoticed by God. God is not hard hearted. To forget the labor of love which you have shown towards his name. When we worship God, blessings and power come down. That's why in CGL, this is our year of thanksgiving and worship to the Lord. The Lord said, Worship me. At the beginning of this year, I will lean to him to ask for direction or what steps to take. He said to me, Worship me. This year, I don't need anything from you. Just worship me. Because when worship goes up, God comes down. And God descends upon his enemies. Power fills his presence. In Christendom, impossibilities are possible in the art of worship. When in your presence of worshiping God, and what did Christ always do before he healed the sick? Father, I thank you because thou hearest me always. And now I know you have heard me already. But because of these people, do this. And God went ahead because when worship goes up, God comes down and make impossibility possible. Today we have an opportunity to live a life of worship. First, to purify our hearts sanctify our souls, make our body preserved for the living God, live a life worthy of his purpose and his glory. If we are ready for that, today is the day. Are you sure that you can come before his presence? Is something hindering you? The Bible said to the sinner, he said, what right have you to take my names upon your lips? Since you hate instruction, but the hour has come. Even those that are in grief will hear his voice. God is expecting you to worship him. But without worship, you cannot assess his power. You can never truly live a spiritual life without worshiping your maker. But if you want to worship God today, you must believe that God is God. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must come into his presence. With a heart full of praise. But time has come for that spiritual worship. For you to enter into his presence, you must, your hands must claim. The Bible says, Who can sense for the hills? A hill where people worship God. He must come with a clean hand and a pure heart. He must not lift up his heart unto vanity. He must swore to his own heart and does not change. Today, you still have opportunity. If only you come to the Lord today with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength, the Lord will accept you into his presence. Don't touch the unclean thing. He will accept you. You will be a son and daughter unto him, and he will be a God unto you. Today, 
is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. You don't know what days will come tomorrow. And today is the right time for salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Brethren, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. As in the days of provocation, when your father provoked him in the wilderness, for 40 years he was wrought with that generation. And he said that the people that do hell, they will not enter into his rest. Let not a promise be left unto us of not entering into his rest. Today is the day of salvation. If you come to him today, I want to pray with you. I want you to be able to worship God with humility. I want you to be able to come to his presence. Because powers reside in worship. Healings reside in worship. Blessing reside in worship. But for you to assess it, you must have a clean heart and a pure heart. You must not be defied. The Bible says, blessed are the undefiled in the ways. These are people that can assess his presence. Brethren, if you want to come to his presence tonight, just say this short prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I know I have veered away from your presence because of my personal sin. I repent of it. Wash me with your blood. Accept me into your kingdom so that I can boldly come into your throne and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you search out the short prayer with me, you just save your life. We want to hear from you. Join our fellowship. There is a link below this video. Click on it. Support the work of the ministry. Join us in worship. Bring your questions every Saturday to us. We will answer your questions from the beginning to the last. You have counseling? Click on the link. Leave a message. Ask for a private call. And I will call you. And both of us will talk. And the Lord will guide you into all truths. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, we want to hear from you. We want you to grow in the things of God. And I believe in God that if you are sick, as you worship God today, your sickness will disappear. Your afflictions will be taken away. Your problems will be rolled away. Those cases will be cancelled. And what the enemy thought for evil against you will, will become your good. What was meant for your downfall will become your promotion. As long as you agree to worship God in spirit and in truth. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your people that have come to this meeting. I thank you for your grace upon their life. And I thank you for allowing your name to be exalted in their life. And I thank you because I know you are with me. And I know you have heard me already. And I thank you for their life. Because I know their sickness are healed. Because their afflictions are rolled away. Their bodies are taken away. Because you say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavily laden. I will give you rest. Lord, there is rest for God's people. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, because I know they have rest today. And as many that sit in darkness, I say the light of God is already shining. As many that are in bondage, I pray that they should be loose and be free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again on Wednesday.